G here. Welcome back to my channel. We are right back at it to talk about Married at First Sight. Uh, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion uh, video is definitely uploaded, so go check that out. Miss Erica Jane has a lot of explaining to do. Okay, Andy was asking some questions. Uh, but we have some questions now for Married at First Sight, and one of them is for Michaela. Michaela, 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 Hurricane K. We go Hurricane K because that's who you were this episode. You little Tasmanian devil, honey badger you. My question is, what is your problem? What is your motherfucking problem? Because I do, I, we do not stress emotional intelligence enough. We always talk about smarts and some, how smart somebody is, but how, emotionally intelligent somebody is is just as important somebody who can uh, not allow their emotions to override logic that is something that Michaela bitch you need work on you say you're going to therapy but you might want to double up those appointments because this this was crazy okay so let's go ahead and get into the episode all the couples you know you know every season they do their you know couples getaway trip um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Everybody else, drop it down in the comments. Uh, you know, tell me how you feel about the episode. Tell me what you think about, um, Michaela and Zach and, you know, her doing all that bullshit, tearing up the people's property and stuff. No one got dang well. They need that safety deposit back. You and they're breaking shit up. Girl, that tragic. If this piece don't go down, I'm trying to, I'm going to get my hair permed this weekend because it is a hot mess right now but it'll do it'll do um but yeah so um yeah let's go ahead and get into it oh my god freaking side of my head y'all i love you know living in the country you know it's peace got acreage land water out back but mosquitoes are coming out and this freaking mosquito bit me on the side of my fucking forehead and now i got this big ass bump right there like what the fuck I, oh my gosh it's hurting and of course it would be on my face but luckily it's on the side Ooh, ooh yee. okay i'm not gonna turn that way Ooh, lord if you live in the country you know the struggle with bugs and flying and crawling shit drop down in the comments um but yeah marry that first sight y'all let's get into it so we all know what it is everybody is partnering up to head on the way to whatever ranch this is right uh, Johnny and Val, they are in, you know, cahoots still. Johnny is saying that he wants to take it back and go back to being more friends than he would like to be like, you know, intimate or whatever. So they're kind of in this awkward spot. Zach and Michaela, they had a fight where he said he wanted to sleep at his place. So Michaela meant, bitch, that means I'm going to move out. It is so funny how Michaela said all these things that she is in and would not do. And she did the exact shit. Like when they sat down and talked and she was like, yeah, you know, I don't leave. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't run away. I find out to be very, you know, abusive to the other person. And then literally the next day she's like, well, fine, then I'll move out. And she keeps doing that. It's crazy. But nonetheless, Zach is like, it's awkward, but you know, we need to have this conversation. So they actually ended up stopping on the way to the ranch. Mirla and Gil, you know what it is with them. You know, they're doing so good right now. And it's cute. Like, I, when Mirla got drunk, when she saw Dr. Pepper because of 25 cent margaritas, that was the most, like, let loose, like, genuine moment from Mirla that was just so nice to see. Like, it was so cute. Like, just drunk, don't know her man. Like, I like it's like so great with Marilyn and Gil. I really hope they do become one of the married at first sight couples that make it for the long haul. Like, I really feel like they could be the next people on Couples Cam. Um, uh, you know how Married at First Sight does like the Couples Cam. I really feel like they could be that couple. Um, uh, at least for this season. Um, moving on. So Brett and Ryan. Brett is on the way with Ryan. Ryan. I'm gonna need you to use words, my nigga. Like, where are your words? Where are your words? You don't talk. Like, bruh. Bruh. So she gets in the car with him and she starts, you know, talking about how, well, you know, I saw your sister and, you know, we just started talking about how, you know, things just went from, you know, totally okay at the honeymoon and it was just a complete opposite switch when we got back. And, you know, she started hinting at the fact that she's feeling like maybe you have a distraction. Maybe there's somebody else in the picture. And Ryan was kind of like, 
uh how did that end up in the conversation like what what, what where did that even come from like and the fact that he addressed that part instead of the part that bitch do you have a distraction is what i was kind of like hmm but we clearly see from the preview of next week he on them dating sites okay so the, the sister basically snitched i really feel like ryan had his sister do his dirty work he didn't want to tell her to hurt her feelings so he's like just drop a hint out there for me and maybe she'll get the picture. Like Ryan's one of those dudes that like acts a certain way. And he's like, well, I figured you would have got the hint. No, no. He's one of them people. I figured you would have got the hint because my actions show it. You know, my words, he's what, you know, I let my actions show what they are. Exactly. Your actions are showing like you're in it. Like you're one foot in, one foot out. And so instead of confusing Brett, just say the shit. Um... But they ended up having a conversation at the ranch. But when she was talking about it, she was like, you know, she didn't say definitively, but she was saying it like it could be, you know, like a thing. And he was like, well, you know, I just let my action show, you know, what it is. Like, I'm a big actions person, you know. Uh, and so it's kind of like, well, your actions are straight up shit this season. Like, you really ain't doing nothing. So then, um, of course, Rachel and Jose, you know, they're all bad good right now. But I just, I don't like them. I feel like they really with the, fa the with the fakery, okay? Do y'all feel that way? Do y'all feel that way about Jose? I really feel like Rachel got some qualms about Jose, but she but she ain't saying that shit, okay? She gonna bust, a year later down the line, she just gonna bust from holding all the shit in. Um, so who gets there first? Michaela and Zach. So Michaela and Zach actually end up stopping at some like little lavender plant and talking about it and Michaela was like you know I talked to my family my sisters and brothers and you know I'm realizing where you know I went wrong and you know how our communication could be better and Michaela is the person like Zach was right she's two different people like it you can't have this huge blow up on somebody and then the next day, come back and be like, well, you know, I'm fine. You know, I realized like, yeah, you can, you, you can, you can acknowledge where you went wrong with something and, you know, can understand, okay, this is how we improve going forward. But to just almost like ignore that your actions affected somebody else, like Michaela has and expecting them to just move on is the crazy part. And, you know, Zach has already admitted that, you know, he holds grudges. So they both got issues. Um, but for the for the moment at least, they're all good. They want to go into, you know, the weekend better. So they get there first, get their bed. They said they're gonna sleep in the room together, you know, yippity doo die day. They got the cowboy hats, okay. Who showed up next? Rachel and Jose. Um, we're gonna talk about Jose. Did y'all see the way he was playing that cornhole game? The way he was eh, eh. Yeah, like that's it's just in my head. Eh. And the way he was chucking it like this, I was like, hmm. Huh. Jose, you know, I ain't trying to say nothing, but I'm trying to say something like questions. Um, but basically everybody showed up. Of course, Mirla, uh, she was looking like I would just really would have pre pre uh, preferred single cabins, but you know, and this is where Gil is kind of like, here we go. I don't think Gil is bothered by her high standards. It's the fact that if she doesn't get them, she doesn't know how to make the best of the situation. Like she completely checks out instead of Gil is there to help Mirla learn how to make the best of a situation. And if you're in something like stop complaining, there's no changing it. So just be like, okay, take a mental note. You know, let it be what it is, but like to consistently complain in the midst of something like you're ruining for what it possibly could be. You know, it could be a fun time if you allow yourself to be to do that, but you don't because it doesn't reach your standards, you know? So I think that's what Gil is just wanting from Mirla to just like allow something, give something a chance, even though if it's not initially for you. So Bal and Johnny and Brett and Ryan, they're basically talking about how, you know, they're not sleeping in the same beds. They all basically prepared, you know, grill, lunch and everything. And of course, start talking about each other's relationships. Uh, Michaela and Zach talk about how, you know, they had a rough couple of days, but they're good. They're doing better. They're going to use this weekend to, you know, just try to do better in the relationship. And so it's kind of awkward in these situations because everybody feels almost like, obligated to only speak when good shit is happening 
But it's like, no, speak when the bad shit is happening too, because guarantee what you go, what's going on in your relationship is going on in theirs in some form, way or another. So, um, Mirla kind of joked, she's like, we're getting a divorce. And so everybody was like, just joking with them. And Gil was like, no, he was like, you know, we're good right now. You know, she is a little princess, uh, but you know, we're good. So then they're like, Johnny and Johnny's like, well, um, it's a little bumpy. And Gil's like, well, you know, that's okay. I really love Gil's communication skills. Like he's the type of communicator that you need. He says something and asks, okay, do you receive it? Do you understand what I'm saying? I need people like that. More communicators like Gil. Um, but Johnny's like, it's bumpy. He's like, well, that's okay. You know, like he's like, he makes people feel comfortable enough to speak. But Bao basically, uh, Johnny and Bao basically are talking about like, you know, they had to take a step back. Johnny's like, I'm just going to be here uh, so I don't get fined. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to show up so I don't get fined. And, um, you know, I'm going to make the best of what this situation is. Um, and, you know, Ryan kind of like consoled him and, well, you know, I understand, you know, you just gotta, you know, just make sure you're communicating with your partner. And Michaela actually said something quite, you know, like almost hinting that she knows what's going on with Brett and Ryan because she told Ryan's like, you know, you, you just really have to communicate. You have to understand, you know, you need to be brutally honest sometimes with your partner, even if you don't feel like it's the right time or that it's going to hurt their feelings, it's better to get it out on the table. So it's very clear that you know Brett has been communicating with the girls about how she feels the situation is going on with her and Ryan so um I'm trying to think what happened after that they played some games played the cornhole like I was talking about um and everything was good um what, what did they do after that I feel like something happened I think that was when Zach and Michaela talked so Zach and Michaela talked after that on the the patio or whatever and come to find out they both had talked about how they realized they understand that they're going to get a divorce within this process and then take a break to work on each other. And if, you know, they work, they make their way back to each other, then, you know, they'll continue the relationship that way. But Zach, I think, Zach is a good communicator, but not a good explainer I don't know if y'all like I don't know if y'all can understand what I'm trying to get at because I I understood what Zach was like I'm a person who can read in between the lines in between the lines like I can effectively understand like my deductive reasoning is on point okay and I can deduce from this situation with Zach that he's just letting Michaela know because she got upset when he was like oh you know um, you know, if we're married, you know, we're not together. I feel like, you know, I'd be happy or like, you know, I just feel like, uh, we could just come back together after that. Oh, because she, uh, he was like, you know, like you, the way you react sometimes, like, you know, it's confusing. Like you say different things and you know, he's, and she was like, you know, I do have things to work on me. Just like you have things to work on with you. And so she's like, I need to know, like, were you ready to be married? And he was like, I was ready to be married, but not to you. So then she's like, well, what's the difference then, you know, if, we ended up, you know, not being married. And he was like, well, not being married, you know, like we wouldn't be together. And, you know, if, if we come back together, it worked. Like, I get what he was trying to say. He's like, let's just take this feeling of it has to work off the table as in being married. He was trying to emphasize within this process, within the married at first sight process, let's take that forcing ourselves to feel like, marriage is it and turn it into okay hey like let's just work on each other on ourselves individually and in the process of working on ourselves individually like it's not pressuring us to like have to worry about this other person right I I feel like that's what he was trying to get at do y'all understand what I'm saying I but Michaela when she was like I can't I can't I can't. And he was caught, like, I literally had the same reaction, like, bitch, what the fuck? Like, huh? And he's sitting there thinking to himself, like, why am I even here? Why am I putting myself through this? This bitch crazy, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, El Pollo Loco. What the, f like, 
And she's like, I can't, I can't. This doesn't make any sense, Zachary. Like, what are you talking about? And, and the zenith of it all is if you want to be married to me. And she's like, are you ready for it? She was like, I've been ready for marriage since I was 17. But was I ready for marriage with Michaela? Hell no. Nah. And I do, I do things like if it wasn't going to be Michaela, it was going to be somebody else. Right. But just because you understand, like I get what Zach is trying to say. He understands, I understand marriage is going to be hard. But marriage with certain people are going to be harder than others. That's what he was trying to get at. Like, yes, marriage in general is going to be work. But damn it, relationship, relationships, whatever it is, one relationship, like, is going to be harder depending on what the issues are. Like, relationships are going to be harder or easier with, with whoever they are. That's what he was trying to get at. And he's like, bitch, this relationship with you is hard as fuck and it's draining my energy. And I don't know if I want to keep doing this because I feel like I'm losing my mind. We both admitted that we don't like the type of person that we are in this relationship. Like, let's take a step back. So then she does the reverbial, well, if you don't, if it's so hard to be with me, then why are you even here? Like, she keeps doing the push-pull shit that a lot of girls do. Well, if you don't want to be here, then go then. And then he leave and you really be mad because it's like, bitch, I wasn't telling you to leave. I was just saying. Like, you pull one of them things. So, she's like, well, then go. Go. Go, Zachary. You don't want to be married to me. And it's kind of like, oh, my God. Um, This is crazy. This is crazy. But wait, there's more. So Bao comes over to basically console Michaela and lets her know, like, look, you and Zach, at the end of the day, y'all have admitted that there's a love for each other. So don't allow that to allow this issue to, you know, push you from being with him. She's like, you know, you have these abandonment issues and Zach is doing something bad. At the end of the day, he's still here in front of you. So why do you keep pushing him away? And it's kind of like Michaela has a real bad habit of doing that. Like, y'all... She literally forgets her, like, Zach, like, you forget your, like, what you be saying. She's like, what do I be forgetting? And then, of course, Mary at first sight had to do the, like, bitch, we're going to have to rewind, <laughs> you know, pause, rewind, play this shit, okay? But nonetheless, Bal consoled Michaela, like, literally this whole episode. And, of course, y'all know everybody's saying, apparently, Bal and Zach are getting down with the get down. So, I'm trying to figure out, is this the moment where her and Zach, you know, started you know, playing footsie under the table or like when was the timing? Like, you know, the reunion is where it's going to be at this season. Um, so, um, so what happened after that? Oh, they all did a little thing for Brett for her dog Baxter, y'all. And she's like, like, she gets like, if you're a pet person, you understand how hard it is to lose a companion. Like, they're just there. Like, they, and I, I understand, because y'all know my man Chico, he used to be, you know, back there and, you know, bark and interrupt our videos. I miss him all the time, y'all. Chico was my man. Like, I had him for years. And so, like, you, like, if you're a person who goes through stuff and your dog is there, like, you, you go through depression, like, they just sit on your lap and, like, they're just emotional. They really are emotional support. Uh, but it was so nice to see everybody do the sparklers and whatnot. So then um they did like the ladies talking and then the men talking the girls basically talked about like their grievances and Michaela's like you know we basically have like this this like this King Kong this King Kong what's the other one Godzilla type you know you know and Bow's like you gotta let your egos get out the way and she's like one of y'all are gonna have to you know concede like wave the white flag so y'all can like the fighting nobody wins nobody wins right um so then brett you know started talking about how with ryan you know she's like i need him to tell me like bitch use your words like i ain't got time to be trying to like figure it out with you i can't read your mind like help me bro like have a heart <laughs> nigga <laughs> help me <laughs> Um, but then we end with Bao, and I loved Bao's part because I know it, I see it, I've witnessed it where, and I remember feeling that way, where it's like, you know, you remember your parents having a good relationship, but there's always a rough part as a child where you remember seeing like disrespect and telling yourself like, I would never do that. 
And Bows talked about how her dad became a mean man and, you know, did these things. And she said, I would never tolerate that. But then you get in a relationship with Johnny and you tolerate and you become the person that you most didn't want to be. And it's, I think it's just a process of, you know, being in a relationship because when you're in a relationship with somebody, you always want to like do stuff for them. You always want to please them in a certain way or like, like you always want to be what they want in some ways. And so she was allowing her herself to change to try to figure out the shit for Bond, for Johnny. But Johnny don't even know what the fuck he wants. So she's like, I'm like, I'm not doing it with Johnny. He's and Johnny is mean. He says some fucked up stuff, you know, about this whole season. So it's like she's realizing, like, I'm not doing this with Johnny. Like, you're effed up, you're mean, and I don't have to tolerate it. And I'm not gonna allow myself to be myself to be that person. And I was like, that meme where you be like, what bitch, Val? Yes, you get it, Val. You ain't said nothing but a motherfucker word. Um, so yeah, um, the guys outside talking and Zach fills them in on how Michaela did the okie doke on him talking about, well, you do whatever you want to do. So he's like, well, we're not sleeping in the same bed. I'd rather, I'd like, I'll just go home and be comfortable in my own bed. And so he left the next thing you know, Michaela up and walked out and took the seasonings. Okay. And so Gil was like, she basically did, you know, like you, you going to leave type shit. And, and it's, it's a game. It's a game. Um, so they end up having like speaking the games, little game night. They played most likely to, and it was cute until it wasn't. You know, they started with most likely to go to jail, most likely to go to rehab. Everybody said Johnny, and it was because like I guess the de like a couple hours earlier, everybody's like he was joking and he did you know the, you know the. You know, and so when Era was like, I think we all just said that because of what you did earlier. And Era was like, yeah, you saw that shit too. And so, could y'all see Johnny? If Johnny was doing drugs, he doing the rich shit. He definitely either, he either, you know, popping pills or he snorting. Like that's, it's either one of those two. Um, for sure. And he high strung in a motherfucker too. So those are them high strung drugs. Um, but then it was like most likely to leave the party early. Of course, it's Mirla. Uh, most likely to, um, uh, what else was it? Uh, most likely to have kids first, Jose and, uh, Rachel. Uh, and then we get to most likely to be petty. And half everybody said Michaela. Rachel said herself, and then Gil was like, let me explain. He like, you the petty, vindictive type to be like, I'll take the batteries out your smoke alarm. And Michaela was like, yep, sure is, sure am. I'm the type to take your headboard. Bitch, you thought you wanted detergent. Bitch, you thought your, your washer was about to be on spin cycle. And she was laughing. It was almost like a crazy laugh. And it's like, okay, the first couple of things, it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, real funny. But then after a while, it starts becoming like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This bitch crazy. And Zach at first kind of laughed at what Gil said because, you know, it's a little hint, hint, like I said. But at some point, it, like Zach said, Michaela almost seemed proud that she was that type of person. So then, you know, it's the end of the night. Um, I don't think anything else, you know, the girls decided they was going to sleep in another room. Ryan tried to pull the okie doke, talking about, oh, he going to sleep in the room with Brett. Brett was like, motherfucker, we don't even sleep in the same bed at home. Like, you think you're just going to do this with me? Uh, no. Um, so then the guys basically they separate and then, um, uh, and then, um, 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 what else? Oh no, Ryan and Brett had a good conversation. She checked him on his shit. She's like, you, you know, talking about you're going to sleep in the bed with me. Like, you got to understand, like, you just can't switch up on me. Like I broke, I've been sitting here wanting something from you. And like, at some point I'm not even caring about myself. And so Ryan had to understand, like, you need to talk. Like, and he's a person too. Like, she's saying just because I said something doesn't mean I'm being negative. And everything, like, he was like, oh, now we just cause an absolute scene. And she's like, this is an absolute scene? Like, us talking? That's an absolute scene? He avoids confrontation because he feels like the slightest disagreement is confrontation of, like, to this magnitude, right? Um... But they ended up kind of coming to, you know, some type of consensus of 
Ryan, use your motherfucking words. I can't read your mind. If you want something out of me or, you know, I want something out of you, like we have to conversate, period. Um, and she called him out, so that was good. Um, but, you know, it's time for bedtime. I forgot about the part. It's bedtime and Ryan and Michaela and Zaggy in the bed. And, you know, she's asking, like, how was today? I was like, like, Michaela really just kind of always just, like, she'll blow up do some shit and it's like well i'm over it so it's like bitch just because you overdone me like i'm over it, like the fuck like this only happened like two hours ago that you did that ex extreme ass response um i'm not saying that zach isn't wrong by any means but i just feel like zach is just a bad communicator like i feel like he tries to do everything to avoid and running away from the mess it's almost running to it if you can understand what i'm saying right because He's running away from the conversation, but Michaela feels like that's abandonment. So feeling abandoned, she gonna fight it. She gonna, Michaela sets the trap to be always ran out on. She always sets the trap to see if somebody's gonna fall for it. And when somebody steps their foot in it, then it's like she gets upset. But it's like, bitch, stop setting traps for people to leave you. So she honestly was the one who started the damn conversation of well you should leave then Zach didn't bring it up he was kind of like Michaela you know you are two different people like I don't know who I'm speaking to sometimes and she was like well you know if that's the way it is then like you can leave like I don't need to be here like you know I knew some shit like this was gonna happen I should have drove my own car I figured some shit like this where you were gonna leave me and I don't even know how that popped in her head because he didn't bring up any conversation about leaving she was the one who brought it up first. But then when she said that, he was like, no, like I brought you here. Like, you know, I'm not leaving without you. No, no, no. Call her sister. And when she said, hey, sissy, when she said it like that, I was kind of like, ew. And then, you know, then he was like, I'm not leaving. He said, but if you wanted to ride with me, I'm staying. But if not, then I'm leaving. And so she was kind of like, oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. And he was just kind of like, see, this is what I'm talking about. And I think watching him laugh might have either triggered her or I don't know what, because she just literally went from, oh, my bad. I misunderstood. You know, okay, you know, I'll, I'll ride with you tomorrow. And he kind of laughs. It was kind of like, that's how confusing. Like, you are, like, can you see now how confused I am? And I guess her seeing that made her be like, well, you know what? Fuck it then. You know what? Get your shit and leave. And he was kind of like, like, leave. Go. Go. Go ahead. Don't want you here. And then it went from, well, I think it's too late. You shouldn't drive. It's 11 o'clock at night, Zachary. Like, just go to bed. And, you know, I think you're not thinking straight. And she pulled the real toxic nigga shit on this man, too. When men be like, babe, you know, you're just not thinking straight. You know, you're tired. You know, it's just been a lot going on. Like, you know, they always use that. When Michaela said that, I was like, whoa. Because she did the, babe, you're just, you're just not thinking straight. You know, just, just sleep on it, you know. And it's kind of like living in twilight land so bow is hearing everything and zach is just like no i want to go like let me go home let me go so he gets his shit and is trying to leave and she's walking behind him doing the damn basically right now this is baby boy zachary is damn jody and michaela is taraji p henson okay and she walking behind him see this this and this you just gonna leave me da 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 and he, she like, you remember our motherfucking Patty? She took his, um, his, um, suitcase. He gets back in the room to get the suitcase and she throws him on the bed. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Just go to sleep, Zach. Go to sleep. And I'm like, did she, what the, what? Now you forcing this man to go to sleep? You trying to hold him hostage now? And so he leaves. And so everybody's outside and he's like, bro, I gotta go. Like, I can't do this. I'm not happy with who I am. Like, I shouldn't be having to put up with this. I get it. I understand. Michaela, girl, you really need to sit on somebody's couch more than what you're doing. I'm not saying that Zachary is not at fault, you guys. I'm not saying that because he has some... I don't want to necessarily say gaslighting tendencies. Like, he's not a gaslighter, but he has gaslighting tendencies. Where it's like he tries to over explain something that when the point is missed, 
he completely abandons the conversation like of what he's trying to get at so then it makes the other person feel like well you're not saying nothing to me you're just like leaving me on blad and i don't know how to deal with blad basically but he goes to get in the car and michaela's like y'all letting him leave y'all letting him leave it's late at night and ryan's like you know i'll go she's like well get in the car then ryan you see he's leaving and Val's grabbing Michaela, you know, trying to get in that house. He's like, y'all, I got to go. I will text you when I make it to the destination. That set Michaela the fuck off. She goes through raw, flipping shit, throwing shit, table. I'm like, girl, security deposit, security deposit. I literally just was like, ching, 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 ching in my head. She breaking shit, slamming doors. Get out, get out. I was like. And when you watch this shit back, it's kind of like, first of all, we all know Zach. You can tell by Zach. He grew up with white people. You can tell he has that, like, want to fit in. I want to be the best of the best black person. I can't be associated with them type black boy. And so watching Michaela act like that, I think completely turned him off to black women in general. Like, it shot his any type of expectations of being with a black woman and you know bow we all know like is this rumor situation with bow and zach like bow ain't white but she ain't black either like he zach was gonna settle with a mexican an asian you know because he don't want to be the black dude that dates a white girl but you know somebody of some persuasion so they can kind of get what it's like to be in a white you know world so, but nonetheless, in the middle of the night, Michaela left. Her sissy came to go get her. And I know when her family watched this shit back, y'all, because they said she Hurricane K. When her family watched this shit back, I just need to know what are their thoughts? What are their thoughts? The next day, the couple's downstairs talking about what the hell happened. And they just like, wow. And then there were eight. <laughs> um then everybody else went to like the little goat farm and you know left they were leaving and they you know fed the goats and the donkeys and brett and ryan said you know they're gonna they're doing better and johnny and bow said they're just gonna kind of you know start from scratch you know just and we'll see how it goes okay we'll see how it goes um but that was the end of the episode y'all next week once again another good episode michaela gonna try to pull the but i love you card and then Brent confronts Ryan about, nigga, what you doing on Bumble, Twinder, Twinder, <laughs> Tinder, Hinge, what you doing? What you doing? Why well, I see you on the dating apps, okay? Uh, but yeah, that's it, you guys. Tell me how you feel about the episode. What, who do you feel like is going to be married or divorced at the end? And what do you guys think of Michaela and Zach's situation? Who is more at fault here for the titanic mess this is? I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to hit my Instagram and Twitter, y'all. And I will catch you later. Deuces.